You want to mess with my career and my freedom? Watch your entire life go down in flames. This all happened five or so years ago while I was working for a proprietary trading firm. The company is a multinational and it had opened a new office in my city a couple of years before I joined them. For those who don't know, most prop shops as I understood it have a very high turnover rate. Just toss everyone in and keep those who stick. The company I worked for recruited every three months. It had space for about 120 traders but the office was never full. Out of the 20 or so who were hired every quarter, only about five managed to make it beyond the three-month internship period, and of those, only one or sometimes none at all made it past the additional three months probation period. The company was operating in my city for two years before I joined and there were only about four people who I could have called permanent. Everyone else, about another 10, was either on their internship or on probation. The setup, I and about 25 others were recruited straight out of university. The internship period paid really well for a first job, about twice as much as any other entry-level position in other financial institutions plus bonuses once we went live regardless of whether one is on internship, probation or permanent, and I was really excited. I first came across my boss, a really decent Indian guy, at an industry day held in our university. That was where they administered the IQ tests and I passed. The office, similar to other mid-sized operations, had a pretty flat management structure. Us traders were at the lowest level, the HR ops manager was above us, and the office manager was, well, the head of the branch. The boss gave time off pretty much whenever you asked for it as long as the day's objectives were fulfilled that was his policy. However, the HR ops manager was his opposite, and then some. This lady was a great ABTCH, and I mean that sincerely. Let's call her Gabby. The instigating event. I first met Gabby when I went to their offices for my final interview. I was registering at the front desk when she marched from her office demanding some documents from the receptionist. The receptionist wanted to finish up with me first but she was ordered off to file storage. Our exchange went like so. Gabby, you're one of the new ones? Me? Yes. I'm really excited. Gabby, don't be. You don't look like you'll make it. Me? Why? Gabby, you're too soft. A pause. Gabby, boot. I can put in a good word for you, if you give me a little something. A bribe. Me? Ha ha. Very funny. Gabby, I'm serious. Give something and I'll make it very easy for you. Otherwise I'll make sure you don't even get into the interview. Me? No. Gabby, stupid idiot. Right to my face. And she kept her word. She made me sit in a hidden corner of the waiting room where no one would see me easily, but I could hear the conversations at the desk. The only reason why I got an interview is because apparently I had impressed the boss at our previous meeting that he came to see why my CV wasn't there. Gabby said that I hadn't sent it in. The receptionist stated that she had seen it somewhere. Then I walked up to the desk at the same time the receptionist said, here it is. It was in the trash and everyone stared at Gabby. From that moment of humiliation onwards, Gabby had a raging hate be ne'er for me. You see, Gabby was a micromanager, more of a nanomanager really. She made us have to request access if we wanted to access sites other than those on her approved list, and for traders who gain info from wherever we could find it, her list was woefully inadequate. She would call meetings at the most inopportune times but only when the branch manager was not around and in her lengthy meetings, you could never leave to check on your positions. She had this annoying habit of taking my lunch and when I confronted her about it, she essentially told me to go duck myself. That I could live with. I just started bringing in two sets of lunch and kept on doing the job that I loved. Gabby was married with two kids, and she was pretty. I guess she liked the attention because she would have a stream of guys picking her up at the office for two hour lunches and when she left for home some evening. But not on Thursday. Thursdays were the days when her husband would come pick her up towing their kids along. I think they went to have a family dinner or something. The mistakes Gabby made. Round 1. Our manager left about two months after I joined. I think he returned to India to get married or something but still stayed with the company. Wished him all the best. 
None of the other permanent traders had the experience corporate required to take on a management role five years at least so they had to shop around. In the meantime, Gabby became the de facto head of the branch despite the fact that her knowledge of futures markets was rudimentary at best. Her first mistake was when she delayed my promotion from internship to probation. I am an excellent trader, and was easily top 5 in my group. Of the 26, she promoted the 20 she liked, kept me and another guy in internship, and fired 4 dot at around the same time, another recruitment drive happened and another 20-ish interns were hired. I knew this was our beef rekindled and remixed, and I was actually surprised she held on to it for so long. It was also pretty unusual since the last thing my former boss did before he left was to promote me from the simulator to a live trading account. But I kept my head down and continued learning, often going back to my former boss and the permanent employees to get advice. Another three months go by, and in the next evaluation I was shocked that I was still not brought up to probation, despite the fact that all of the new recruits of the second group had been promoted and I was easily the best and the only one trading live. I knew I was good at the job. The permanent guys all said so. The group I initially joined with was frequently asking me for advice. To their credit, a few of them were good, but most of them were still on SIM, and as a rule, no one advanced to probation while still on SIM. However, you could go live while on internship if you were good which is what had happened to me. So I was a live trader and making good money but I was still on internship and passed over twice. I couldn't let go of that. I decided to talk to Gabby directly. I approached the senior guys and made my case, though I was careful not to put her in bad light. They agreed to help me and so they did. About a month after the she passed me over the second time, she gave me my promotion and I was now on probation. At this time, she was still unsure of her power and was still afraid of the permanent traders. Those guys were like gods. Two months after my promotion, another evaluation and recruitment drive. I was not promoted. The group I started out with was now permanent, despite having only two of them trading live. The group I was currently with on probation were all promoted to permanent status. The group behind me on internship was all promoted to probation, and another group was hired. I let it go hoping she had got it out of her system. Sadly, she had not. Round two, three months go by. I'm trading live and loving it, though still on probation. An evaluation comes up again and I'm not promoted, despite the fact that, contract to contract, I was almost on a level with the permanent employees. The group that found me on probation was advanced to permanent status to a man, and none of them were live. The group behind me caught up to me and a new batch of newbies were hired as interns. I couldn't let this one go either. I approached the original four permanent employees who were now my very good buddies and planned to do the same thing as last time. Only this time, it didn't work. Gabby had grown into her sadistic power and flatly refused to even consider my promotion even after she was presented with evidence that I was worth it. Her argument was along the lines of, I'm the boss so I can do whatever the hell I want. But I wasn't having that, so I contacted my former boss for help. At the time he had been promoted to head of operations, Africa. He was actually quite surprised, given my performance, that I was still on probation. Needless to say, the order came down from on high and Gabby looked like she was essitting six pineapples simultaneously as she handed my letter. And I thought that was the end of it. How wrong I was. On the next recruitment she hired this girl, let's call her Sue. Sue was an intelligent person all round but she didn't have the emotional quotient to handle the market trading, as I was taught, requires two mental aspects, IQ and EQ. You can't improve IQ, but you can boost your EQ to deal with the numerous stresses that accompany the career. Sue had more than enough of the IQ part, but EQ, not so much. No worries, you can work on that. Just to recap, the office now had about 70 employees. Of these, over 30 were permanent staff me included but only 11 were trading live. Another 20 or so were on probation, but only 3 were trading live. None of the interns were live. The office needed to stay profitable if it was to stay open which means that the money the 14 live traders were paying the salaries of everyone in the office, rent, supplies, health insurance, pensions etc etc needless to say, 
corporate was not seeing a lot of returns from our branch, and as I came to learn later from my former boss, were considering shutting down the branch and costing us our jobs. But I digress. The last straw. The grade A bitch Gabby took advantage of an inconsolable and desperate suit to try and get me for sexual harassment. This is how it went down. Remember all those people still on sim? Well, they all came to the 11 of us for trading advice and we did what we could to help them. We divided up the sim traders into groups and I was mentoring about four people. Sue was one of them. As any trader will tell you, the period before profitability is usually one of losses unless you're really good and is filled with stress and fear hence the need for high EQ. It's normal, and you get through it. Sue was going through such a rough patch one evening. We were going over her trades bad trading day all around, when she just burst out crying. I know how it feels. I had shed my own tears as well. So comforted her the best I could. I held her hand and patted her on the back awkwardly to this day I still don't know how to comfort someone until she quieted down. What I didn't know was that Gabby had seen us. As I came to learn later, she approached Sue the following day and made her an offer. Gabby would make sure Sue kept her job and would get her a lot of money if she stated that I had actually harassed her. Sue took Gabby up on the offer and what followed was a nightmare. It started with a formal reprimand from corporate, a hearing in which I wasn't present to defend myself because Gabby forgot to send me the summons. Apparently she lobbied quite viciously to get me fired. The only reason I was able to keep my job was that my former boss came to my defense. Despite his help, I lost my quarterly bonus about 100,000 US dollars and half of my hold back about 400,000 US dollars. I also had to attend seminars which essentially involved watching the same film on sexual assault in the workplace three hours long until I stated, in writing, that I was an abuser and it would go on my record. I knew that if that happened, Gabby would have the ammunition she needed to ruin my life forever. So every day, I got into the office at 7 in the morning, watch the three-hour film until 10. Refuse to acknowledge it, then get to work, leave the office at 11.20 in the evening, rinse and repeat. For almost seven months. It was tiring, and torture, and Gabby never let me live it down. All of the people I had been mentoring were transferred the day after my reprimand. A day after that, Gabby informed me via letter that my clip size had been cut from 1,000 to 20 contracts. Yeah, I had to admit, I was bloodied. I was down, but the BTCH didn't know that she should have ended me. The revenge. Step 1. Ruin Gabby's career. I started compiling all the asset that was happening to me in the office. It started when I realized that when I went out to lunch, someone would open my desk drawer and mess around with my notebook, where I jotted down my trading ideas for the day. The only person who had a key apart from me was Gabby. Apparently she had mastered my lunchtime routine for the entire 45 minute break and would open my locker when I was out smoking. She would then copy down my trading plans for the day and give them to Sue. I even saw them at it once, but they didn't see me. I documented it. I let it go on for a while so that I could establish a pattern via Sue's trades. I then approached two of the permanent traders who were closest to me and told them my plan. Remember when I said almost no money was reaching corporate? And that there were only 11 live traders? The situation had only gotten worse. The office was now full but we had less than 15 live traders. Live trading could only be approved by head of operations my former boss and he was a strict one. Now imagine that my earning capacity had been cut by over 90%. My two friends agreed to my plan and they slowed down their trading by around 50%. This essentially put the branch in the red and three weeks later, we were told that head of ops and other head honchos were coming down. The next phase involved getting Sue into a corner. Please, a tear or two, and revealing that I could prove she had been stealing my work were enough to get a written statement from her that Gabby had orchestrated my whole sexual harassment thing. Step 2. Ruin Gabby's marriage. It took only a little investigation on my part to realize that all those men who visited the office were actually Gabby's lovers. She would leave for two-hour lunches with her phone turned off. I took advantage of one such period. Gabby left and I snuck into her office to find her Facebook profile open. 
everyone knew she was always on there and it was a sore point because she had banned it for the rest of us minions. I got into her messenger, and voila! Explicit texts, nudes, rants about her husband and his inadequacies, the six guys or so she had cheated with, all of it. I copy pasted the data into her private email which she was logged into as well always clear cache, you guys and sent it to my private email, then deleted it from her sent folder. Now I had the ammo on my phone ready to send. Step 3, Ruin Gabby's relationship with her kids. Now, I'll say right off the bat I'm not proud of this step. But to bust my justice nut, it wasn't enough to just send the info to her husband. So I waited for Thursday when I knew he would be passing by the office with the kids. The pro revenge god saw fit to bless me that day, because it was the same day that corporate head honchos were riding into town. Thursday. I was at the office at 7 as usual with all my documentation from my appointment letter to the numerous rejected requests for promotion, sat through the 3 hour sexual harassment video yes, I was still doing that, and waited for the moment. The guys from corporate, my former boss included, arrived and went straight into a meeting with Gabby. I was quite certain that they would call me in to know why I had been attending a sexual harassment awareness class for almost a year, and I was ready for them. I was called in after lunch, at about 2. The question was asked and before I could answer, Gabby jumped on the bit like I knew she would. She went on a long rant about how I had been insubordinate, and how I liked to touch the female employees. I could tell from her grin that she thought she was winning, and then I pulled out Sue's letter, and the grin curdled on her face. Sue was hurriedly called in and she backed my story. She said she was sorry. She was fired on the spot and told to go wait at the receptionist for her final check. I felt no sympathy. I was on a roll. Next I pulled out my analysis of my trades and told them how Gabby had been breaking into my locker and stealing my notes for Sue. Gabby d needed. Sue was called back in. She d needed. My former boss logged into the company network, pulled Sue's and my trading data. He compared the positions taken by both of us with my notes. He said it was true. Sue was fired again. They told me they would refund my confiscated bonus and hold back, with an extra 50 grand. That was fine by me. The justice was enough. And then I spotted Gabby's husband heading into her office as usual, their two kids in tow. I pulled out my phone, grinned at her and said, your husband is here. She turned around and saw him. She excused herself for a minute to tell him to wait. My former boss said, Sure. I pressed send. Edit. As for the aftermath, Gabby's husband absolutely lost his asset. Her office was glass walled and the rest was open plan so we could all hear what they were shouting about. He finally left with their kids in tow sorry little ones Gabby followed him still shouting at him. Then she saw us all standing around and the look on her face was priceless as she was wondering which aspect of her life to try and salvage. She let her husband go but about an hour later she had been fired. My favorite boss stayed behind since there was no one left. He stayed for a month training the lady who had been with the company the longest to take over as manager. She is easily the most brilliant mind I had ever met. Unfortunately the branch was still struggling with so many employees who were not generating income and they had to shut it down. But they transferred all the performing employees to their other various branches in London 2 branches and India 9 branches. So I guess no one undeservedly lost their jobs, I still stalk Gabby on Facebook. There have been a lot of I'm single because I'm too awesome posts of late. I almost feel sorry for her, but I remember the 3 hour video and I stopped being foolish. From what I could see on LinkedIn, Sue bounced around from firm to firm until she found a position as a research analyst. My favorite boss is still at the firm. We talk from time to time, I took a break from trading for a while. After all the s at that went down, I needed a break so I didn't take them up on their offer to relocate to India. Went to work with a buddy of mine who has a consultancy. When I feel ready I'll go back to the market. For me at least, there is no other job as challenging and satisfying. Wow. That was long. I think though that's the end of my pro revenge. Edit 2. Wow. This blew up. And gold too. Thank you kind strangers. I'll try and get to all the messages in a bit. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. I did too. Well, 
the revenge part anyways. Edit 3. So a few guys have stated that my story is BLLS on account of some claims. I will address the most common ones. 1. Guys have gone through my post history and have found another post I made on Ask Reddit where someone had asked when the last time I yawned was. It's a bit long and ridiculous. If you read it and honestly thought that it was actually true, I can't help you. You can choose to believe that I'm a footless, noseless, 80-year-old Vietnam vet or a young man trying to make his mark. It's your choice, too. Others have found another post on Ask Reddit where someone asks people who like their jobs what they do. I said that I write papers and it's decent money. And that's true as well. I've been writing since my first year of college. I love doing it. I can write all day and then some. That job got me through college and I made enough to properly supplement my student loan. Do I still write? Yes. I do it because it's challenging, and as I said in that post, I learn something new every day. In fact I'm still writing now because my gig at the consultancy is not full time. You can do more than one thing at a time, you know. 3. Yet other people have tracked down a random comment I made on a funny comment. I wrote something along the lines of I laughed so hard I was almost reprimanded at work. And they ask, how can you say you write from home and you're still at the office? Yes. I can write at home and go to the office. It's what happens when you have time on your hands. I'm not a one-dimensional person whose job is their identity. And neither are you hopefully. 4. Another guy found a comment of mine where I stated that I'm African. For some reason s he didn't believe that Africans engage in financial markets or something? Ike. 5. By far the biggest reason is the fact that I'm active on the Armenschreit sub. And it's true. I am. After I was falsely accused, of course I went digging around the internet looking for answers. It made me think. And as far as false accusations are concerned I fully support the MRA position. I am not ashamed of it. I'm not here to change your mind. And I definitely hope that you never have to go through what I went through. People have committed suicide because of that asset. It's not something to joke about. 6. Lastly, to the person who doesn't believe that one can make that much money straight out of college, yes that much money. Phew. Got that off my chest. Oh, and another person wondered how HR could end up as head of the branch. I think I specified earlier that she was HR Ops. The Ops part should have qualified her to be branch head if she wasn't utterly incompetent. In the end, though, I guess you just have to choose whether to believe or disbelieve.